Assalamu alaikum. My name is Dr. Haytham. How are you? I'm Dr. Al Haytham. All right. So, um, Dr. Al Haytham, this is a procedure station. Um, you have been provided with a mannequin in front of you. We'll assume he is a 55 year old male uh, who's had right sided hemiplegia. Uh, they've called a code stroke. Uh, his DCS is deteriorating, and they've asked you to manage the airway. You've determined that you need to do a rapid sequence intubation, and you have some equipment on the table in front of you. Please describe your approach to the RSI. Thank you. Um, well, first of all, I'll start by uh, wearing my PPEs and uh, reassessing the patient. As it appears, the patient uh, is in low GCS. So while I'm preparing my definitive airway, I'll put the patient on a 15 liter non rebreather mask. So this is uh, my non rebreather mask. Just attach it to 15 liters and keep the patient on it. Meanwhile, I'll start by my preparation. I have my suction and it's connected and checked and I'll have my direct laryngoscope and if in case I have a video laryngoscope I'll make sure it is working. I'll have uh, different sizes of ET tubes since this patient is an adult male. Start with 7.5, I'll get 7 and 8 also to make sure that it is. We'll just have um, our 7.5 tube. We'll have a 10 cc syringe to make sure that the cuff is working and there is no leak. Yes, okay, and then we'll deflate it again. I'll have my stylet that works with the um, ET tube that I'm gonna go in. I'll have my adjunct in place just in case, and I'll have my gel for the tube, um, and we'll have uh, the Megal forceps, if anything that is there in the throat that needs to be, for anybody that needs to be taken out. And we'll have second line or for difficult intubation, my bougie. And we'll create, um, we'll make sure that there is a second kit for our surgical airway if needed. We'll have our ambu bag and making sure that the uh, seal of the mask is there and the, that the bag is connected. So once um, that I have checked my equipment and everything is uh, available, I'll ask uh, my uh, my associates or my uh, team to prepare my uh, and, um, to prepare the medications that I need to give. And this patient, uh, can you tell me how many kgs is he, please? He is sixty kilograms. All right. So we'll proceed with uh, two milligrams of uh, ketamine per kg, and that will equate to one hundred and twenty milligrams of ketamine. And the other thing that we're going to be using is uh, rocronium as a paralysis agent. <coughs> And the paralysis agent will be 1.5 milligram per kg, so we'll proceed with 90 milligram per kg. Until the medications are being ready, the patient is already in 15 liters mask, because so he's being pre-oxygenated. We'll aim for three minutes of pre-oxygenation or eight tidal volumes. Do I have my medications available now? They are available. All right, that's good. If they are available, we'll uh, start and proceed. We'll just connect the... Um, uh, and move back to the 15 liters and then we'll remove the 15 uh, liters mask. We'll put it in and then we'll proceed with the ketamine. Can uh, the ketamine be pushed and flushed, please? It's been administered. Thank you. And now we will proceed with the paralysis agent rocronium. Can it be given and flushed, please? Rocuronium given. All right. So uh, after the paralysis agent has been given, we look for fasciculations and we'll wait for 30 seconds to one minute until we feel that the patient is fully paralyzed. We'll try and maintain and see an E shape over the mask so that we can get good chest tries. Patient is adequately paralyzed. All right. In this case, we will proceed with our intubation. So now we'll have our direct laryngoscope. We have checked already that it is working and the light is working. So we'll try and uh, put it inserted laterally and then try and get it in the middle while pushing the tongue away. Meanwhile, we'll be lifting up, making sure that we're not hurting the teeth, aiming for the tip of the 
laryngoscope to be at the vellicula so that we can see the vocal cords and the interior part of the trachea. Now we're going to proceed with the tube. The tube, usually we put it at 22 centimeters or 23 centimeters in male and then we'll connect it and make sure that the tube in place. After that we will connect it to the, the tube and we'll inflate the cuff. Uh, of course we need to have the um, uh, ETCO2 measuring or the colorometric if possible and then I will auscultate as well to see if there is bilateral air entry. Is there bilateral air entry? There is bilateral air entry on auscultation. Thank you. So we'll secure the tube at uh, the level of 22 to 23 and connect the uh, patient to a ventilator with the uh, sitting as per protocol. We'll post the patient in post-intubation medication as per protocol as well and we will take a chest x-ray Post-intubation medication, would you like to start? Uh, at this stage, I'll start the patient on fentanyl and midazolam. Uh, fentanyl 50 mics uh, uh, per kg per minute. And uh, we'll do also just x-ray. Thank you. Okay. Some stations may be procedure-based. In this scenario, rapid sequence intubation was being assessed and the examinee was expected to perform intubation and address the following. Preparation with equipment check, including second line airway options and adjuncts as needed. Adequate pre-oxygenation with appropriate ambibag technique and addressing proper seal. Mention of medication, preferably with dosages, should also be verbalized induction and paralysis should be performed. Adequate positioning of the patient is important, and it is important to state this out loud, either in the sniffing position, at the chin lift, or with a jaw thrust as appropriate to the case. Performance of intubation should also verbalize the technique and visualized components very intubation. Post-intubation, auscultation, ETCO2 monitoring and confirmation should be addressed, as well as protocol for sedation, analgesia, and disposition 